Well, it's been a, a pretty incredible comparing, uh, preparing for your eighth consecutive title defense. Uh, I guess, I mean, are there still emotions, nerves, anything, or is it just business as usual for you at this point? As usual, emotion, nerves, everything like on their own place. <laughs> Fair enough. You know, obviously everybody's pointing to your last bout in June and saying, oh, maybe there's some weakness there. She's finally showing that she can be beaten. How do you look back to that fight in June? What, what do you think we saw in that fight? I think it was a good fight, and definitely we are speaking about the uh, top competition, right? Best promotion of mixed martial arts in the world. We're competing all the best athletes. Definitely, you're going to have to work out a lot. And not every fight can be like easy fight, right? But uh, this is the difference between, cham between champion and challenger, because champion, no matter how hard is the fight, we will find the way to stay the champion. This is what I show in the fight. No matter how hard it was, yes, it was harder than like maybe previous fight, but still the champion I am. Nice. You've continued to fight the best in the world. Uh, Alexa Grasso, amazing boxing skills, uh, good on the feet, I guess. What do you see in her and where does she stack up in terms of challenges that you faced? Yeah, you said exactly. She is very good in what she is doing. That's why she is a contender for this bout, for this like um, next my title defense. And yeah, I took everything seriously about her. I know she is good in her striking, but we also cannot forget we are fighting mixed martial arts. So I prepared for everything as usual. And yeah, just be very attentive during the whole fight and be myself and do everything I have to do to win the fight. Nice. And last thing for me, obviously an eighth consecutive defense would be incredible. You're setting women's records, but then you would start getting next to the names like you know, GSP and Anderson Silva and Demetrius Johnson. Do you look at things like that? And do you want to set records like that before you decide you're done? What, what else do you have left to check off before you say I've done enough? Um, it's never enough. No matter how, how much you are doing, it's never enough. Because for me, martial arts, it's my life. And I'm not competing for numbers. I'm not competing for like be next to some name or something like that. I do that because I love to do that. And if I do that, I want to be the best. Valentina, over here. Uh, in your last few fights uh, leading up, I like the press conferences in the media day, you would say things like, they all say the same thing, they all talk. But Alexa has been very respectful of you. She, she praises you at, at media day. So has it been refreshing to have an opponent that isn't, you know, talking? She just, she just respects your skills and wants to challenge herself? Mm, this is like, um, I think it's... Um, all fighters, they have their own character, right? Alexa, she's Alexa. Other fighters, they're other fighters. And she won't like, do things that um, she never did before, only because someone wants to create trash talk or something like that, or more attention for the fight. No, I think this is the, exactly what uh, this fight game need, characters. If you are like like you are, be you are, not be someone else. If someone creating trash talk because he is or she is trash talkers, that's fine. But don't try to play some game that it's not yours. And yeah, I heard I heard like she also mentioned about like everyone has a weak point, something like that. But um, and she kind of like will figure it out where is this weak point. But I want to say to remind, I want to leave a reminder. While you are trying to figure out my weak point, don't forget about your weak point. Don't forget, forget about your fears. I know her fears. I know her weak point, And I will use it in my game. I saw you did some of your camp in Japan, and you did some sumo wrestling, or you were at the sumo wrestling. How was that experience? It was amazing. Uh, actually, I didn't do <laughs> training with the sumo wrestling. I was watching how they train. And it's very impressive because uh, usually people would do, they watch uh, uh, competition, it's, and it's kind of like a whole different story. And the trainings, it's you see how they work, how much effort they put on their like uh, sport. And after we were uh, like very lucky to have a lunch with them and actually to stay, um, like see how they are living. It's like three floor building. First floor, is, this is like training gym. Second and third, and one dormitories. And third, when they like cook, and they cook by themselves. It's uh, 
everything about traditions, everything about uh, like how you are. Uh, how much you respect you have to your like training partner to your teacher and i very enjoy to see the approach what uh, japan uh, like mm, how is martial arts over there uh, because it's kind of like old style martial arts now in the modern world uh, many fighters they're thinking about money about like ratings about like they don't care much about the gym they don't care much about their tr uh, coaches uh, but the there, it's still like old school. The school what I was growing up, the same spirit. And where uh, they fighting, they training very hard. And I speak not only b uh, about the sumo wrestling, also about MMA fighters, about like in general uh, mixed martial arts. And uh, they're training because they have an idea. They're very dedicated what they are doing. They fight for their noble things. They fight for their gym, their coaches. Not because some money they will get. No, it's about honor. And I very respect that. Valentina over here. Hi. Um, you mentioned training in Japan. Is there anywhere else you'd like to go next to train? You train all over the world. Is there any place you have in mind of where you'd like to train next? Um, to train next, it's a very interesting question, but I don't, don't know about the training, but one of my um, uh, countries what I really want to visit, India, is calling me a lot and saying, Valentina, when you come to India, and I really want to go there, because I think India, India is a very pretty country. I love to watch Bollywood movies, and recent movies, they are like, uh, they are just cool, especially about sport. They're very uh, cool movies. Um, I want to uh, go to New Zealand. I've been in Australia like a couple years ago, but didn't have a chance to travel to New Zealand. And I think uh, wherever I go, I will train as well. <laughs> and just last question for me. When we spoke last, I know you mentioned that you feel like Aaron Blanchfield would need one more fight if she was to fight for the title. But oh, Dana, maybe more. Maybe, okay. Well, <laughs> Dana White mentioned in an interview recently that he does think that Aaron's next because of an issue with Talia Santos fighting in the United States. What was your reaction to that? I don't know if you saw that clip. No, I didn't see that clip. I didn't see. Uh, I, I didn't know because I am super focused on my upcoming fight this Saturday. But I still believe uh, if they put her, that's fine. But I still believe she's not ready for the title fight yet. Valentina, aquí, ¿cómo estás? Um, en español, está bien. Está bien. Uh, si bien es cierto, tú eres eh, de Kirguistán originaria, también peleas por Latinoamérica. Técnicamente es la primera vez que dos peleadoras latinoamericanas van a pelear por un título en el UFC. Toda la gente te quiere mucho en Latinoamérica y está pendiente de esta pelea. ¿A ti qué significa Latinoamérica en esta pelea? Uh, significa mucho para mí Latinoamérica porque he vivido bastante tiempo, ocho años por allá. Y uh, claro que adoptó muy bien la cultura uh, que tiene la gente, el ambiente en general. Y tengo mucho amor y mucho cariño por todos los países. Porque cuando nosotros vivimos en Perú, uh, por, este, uh, por este tiempo, nosotros viajamos por toda Latinoamérica. Colombia, Ecuador, Argentina, Paraguay, Uruguay. Uh, sí, claro que Brasil. Tenemos muy buenos amigos en México también, muy buena escu escuela Black Belt Central. Y um, esto, um, este mundo siempre se queda en mi corazón, porque tanto tiempo es como ya es parte de ti. Valentina, eh, hay mucho respeto entre Alexa y tú, pero en términos generales, ¿qué tienes tú que no tiene Alexa? Mm, yo creo que eso vamos a ver el sábado, ¿no? <risa> y yo, yo no, no me gusta antes de la pelea hablar mucho de estas cosas, comparar una a la otra, uh, porque yo creo que cada una tiene sus cosas buenas y um, esto es uh, lo más bonito um, de ver en artes marciales, cada uno es diferente y todos juntos no, nosotros como traemos una um, belleza para artes marciales mixtas en general. Gracias. Okay. Valentina down here. Do you think you'll ever go back up to bantamweight or is the rest of your career going to be at flyweight? I do think I, I'm going to move up. Yeah, I do think it's going to happen sometimes, someday. <laughs> Given that, do you think a trilogy with Amanda is inevitable? It's only one, it's only the one reason why I should move up. How do you think a trilogy goes? This time has to go like my way, <laughs> no matter what. <laughs> I wouldn't. I I think I I will have to do like everything that um, 
I have to do to win the fight because it's kind of like what um, I expect in from myself. Do you think you're the only person at 135 that can beat Amanda? I am. Mm. I will try to do that. Yeah, I think that my hour, like two fight, uh, second fight, what we had, and I don't think that um, I lost that fight, and I rewatched it like several times, and I still uh, think it's it should be like go different way. Um, if it would be like champion against champion, no doubt judges would give like victory to my side. But that time it was different situation, different cir circumstances. That's why it's happened what has happened. But uh, when the trilogy gonna happen, it's, it's gonna be everything like completely new, brand new. Valentina down here, I know you said that you don't focus on accolades and if you do win this fight, you're gonna become the first champion to complete the set of rubies. You're gonna have eight rubies. I mean, how does that feel? Oh, it feels amazing, yeah, definitely, but I don't think about that right now. <laughs> I don't want to put in my head uh, like uh, thoughts that don't belong here right now, at this moment. I know if I win, this, this is only what matters. But if I start to think about rubies, numbers, names, or something like that, I'm going to go way far from my goal. So I prefer to stay focused on what I have to do, and I know if I... Uh, do the way as I want to do that, I mean successfully defend my title. Everything else just going to be here naturally. Thank you. Hey, Don, Tina. Uh, Ren Nakai picked up a big win and called you out, and then you offered, you said, if you come to the UFC, get in the top 10, I'll, I would like to fight you. Is that, is that a fight, you know, I know that you're focused on Alexa, but is that a fight in the future that, that, that you would like to welcome? Um, I think, yeah, I saw her tweet and she was like saying things like uh, like that with a lot of respect and everything. I think she is like old school fighter who was a uh, first Japanese fighter fighting in UFC and now having this uh, successful career, what she is having, I think 10, 10 wins so like by KO submission, something like that. And she deserved to be in UFC, but it doesn't mean that she can like straight jump in here and fight for the title. It doesn't mean. I just say like, yeah, you deserve to be in UFC because you are old school fighter. With that being, with her, with her being an old school fighter, is that a name that, that you would like to put on your resume? Mm. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I never think about like what uh, collecting names or something like that. But if she can do that, if she can uh, like go back to the UFC, if she can claim up to top ten, top 10, it's hardly difficult, I say, because this competition is very hard. If she can do that, why not? Cool. Thank you. Valentina, way over here in the back. Uh, Valentina, you know, we always talk about, oh, she must prepare so much to be at the level that she's at and to be as successful as she has. So when you have a fight like your last one that was so competitive and you already trained so much, does it change anything? Does it, how do you improve when you already put so much work into being the best? Oh, you know, you know, it's kind of like cool thing about martial arts. You never stop to improve. No matter how successful you are, you are here to be better every single day. And no matter how was successful fight, like or like what fight it was, there is some things to um, like work on. And after every fight after like successful defense even more a little bit complicated defense me my coach pavel my team we are sitting together we see what we can add to my game and we work on that so uh, this process is never stopping for me so it's kind of like natural for me i every time looking how to be better we obviously finally got to see your movie with halle berry bruised the fight ends in a draw is there a version of the movie where you win the fight uh, about what? Is there a version of the movie where you win the fight with Halle Berry? What kind of movie you were watching? Or the film? <laughs> I am winning the fight over there. What kind of movie was you watching? Thank you. Valentina, aquí en español otra vez. La última pelea tuya fue difícil, fue cerrada, fue complicada. ¿Cambiaste algo para esta nueva defensa de tu campeonato? ¿Agregaste algo, quitaste algo, alimentación, parte física, la táctica? Mm, no significa que tú tienes que cambiar algo cordialmente. 
a pesar que una pelea fue un poquito más complicada que las, las otras. No, no estoy pensando que uh, la, la pelea fue mucho más complicada, porque um, ¿qué nosotros podremos ver de mi contrincante? Sentar de atrás de mi espalda y solamente esperar cuando pasa el tiempo así y reci recibiendo todo el damage que yo siempre golpeaba. Uh, ¿Qué se puede decir? Sí, tal vez esta decisión fue 2 a 1. Sí, tal vez, pero no creo que fue muy complicada y muy difícil coordinar, para coordinalmente cambiar algo. No, yo sé que solamente tenía que trabajar igual como yo estoy trabajando y lo más importante para la pelea que yo tengo a uh, este sábado es uh, ser mi misma, trabajar en mis instintos como uh, peleadora y um, yo sé que si estoy en una forma de 100% eh, todo va a salir bien. Y ya una más rapidito, llevas muchas defensas de tu corona y ganas y ganas y ganas. ¿Hay algún momento en que te aburres que es lo mismo con lo mismo que el reto competitivo tuyo dice necesito otra cosa? ¿Te pasa eso por la mente en algún momento o no? No, nada, nada, porque uh, cada pelea es pelea, es pelea de verdad. Y cuando tú entras al octágono, el frente a ti es un rival que quiere golpearte con toda la fuerza, nunca no puedes estar aburrida, <risa> porque los, los golpes son de verdad. Muchas gracias. Gracias. Valentina in the back. Way back here. Um, the competition in all of the weight classes for the women continues to improve. Uh, what are you seeing in the, the kind of this latest crop of competitors that has improved martial arts for the better, um, specifically in UFC? Uh, I see a lot of progress in competition, yes, and it's like female martial arts, they are on a level, on a huge level right now. And I was um, saying uh, previously that flyweight is going to be the most interesting weight class in like uh, uh, female division, and now we finally can see that and people accepting that. I was uh, saying it for like years, and now it's like when time is Pass, people kind of like ready to accept it. It was there since the beginning, but now everyone is ready to accept. This is the difference. But yes, definitely the level is huge right now. Now we can see uh, like not only uh, style against style, for example, wrestler against striker. No, girls are like complete MMA fighter. They fight good in striking, they fight good in wrestling, they fight good in uh, on the ground game. So this is the uh, development of the sport. And MMA mixed martial arts is the sport number one in the whole world right now. Uh, last question for me, next week in Dallas, ATA will have its spring national championships. What would you say to those young women and young men who are getting ready uh, to head to the mat next week? Oh, just uh, want to wish the best of luck for every single competitor because uh, sports, uh, sport brings happiness to every person, no matter how like result, uh, result like w w what kinds of results you can get, win or lose. But this is the part of this magic journey of uh, of the sport, and I uh, I, I say. Uh, from my experience, and I am in sport um, this year, like celebrating 30 years, I can say exactly this is what makes me happy. Thank you. Good luck. Um, Valentina, over here. Over here. Um, you know, you're a pretty big betting favorite, uh, as expected at this point, uh, against Alexa this week, and, and you've been as much of a Sherlock as it gets in the sport. I'm kind of curious, like, where your confidence is. And, you know, are you still deserving it to, to be a 5 to 1 favorite over somebody? Um, you know, I never watched that before the fight. This is the less interesting thing, but it's like taking my attention about the odds and everything like that. Because um, I'm kind of like focusing on the real thing, in real, like uh, when I'm gonna step inside of the octagon, it's gonna, I'm gonna face a furious girl <laughs> what wanna like to take what is mine and I not let her do that things. That's why I kind of like um, every time focus on myself and not looking who put me or, because it's kind of like, um, 
you cannot be good for everyone. There is some people say you are good, there is some people say you are bad. So just be honest with, your, with yourself. Do what your like, conscience says to you that this is the right things to do. And this is the most important. If you know that you, do, you are doing everything right, this is number one what you have to take um, in, like, um, in your mind. Perfect. And then obviously your name is about as big as it gets in women's mixed martial arts and you're fighting on a card with John Jones headlining, obviously the biggest name or one of the biggest names in the sport. Curious how you think that uh, John Jones Cyril Gone fight is going to play out. I think it's amazing fights, huge comeback for John Jones, amazing uh, opponent Cyril Gan, and yeah, it's gonna be uh, like just uh, over the roof the uh, event by itself because it's not only just uh, about them, it's about whole fight card, and I think it's just amazing. Thanks, Thank you so much.